Hi folks, uh, hope you all can hear me well. Uh, can someone please uh, ping on the chat uh, if you can hear me? Uh, okay, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is our seventh IEM for developer meetup and uh, hope all of you are doing great and uh, most importantly, uh, staying safe. Uh, last uh, meetup, we talked about uh, uh, gRPC uh, fundamentals and then how to secure communications among uh, gRPC uh, microservices. So today's uh, meetup, we are going to extend that discussion. So we won't be uh, repeating what we discussed in, uh, in our last meetup. So we won't be uh, like uh, explaining uh, gRPC uh, fundamentals, uh, protocol buffers, uh, uh, and why you need to pick gRPC over uh, uh, JSON HTTP. Uh, so you can uh, go through that video if you want. Uh, so that's shared here. The link is uh, on the slide. And also all the videos that we do, all the uh, meetups we do, uh, we record them and publish uh, to this particular uh, YouTube channel. Also uh, in April, uh, I did another meetup on controlling access to your microservices with Istio Service Mesh. Uh, that also covers some of the uh, security fundamentals uh, with respect to uh, Istio Service Mesh. Okay, uh, and the code samples I'm using uh, in this uh, session, in this meetup, all uh, you can find in this particular uh, Git repository. And uh, even though uh, all of you are muted now, if you, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to unmute and speak up or else you can use, uh, you can use the uh, Zoom chat. Uh, I see Anshu says uh, you can't hear. Uh, can you hear me or uh, is it just for one issue that? Uh... Okay, great, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So uh, let's get started. Uh, this is a high level uh, overview of the Istio architecture. Uh, if you are familiar with Istio, if you have used Istio for some time, you know that uh, there was a major architectural change in Istio since uh, 1.5 version. Uh, so this architecture diagram shows uh, the 1.5 version. So here you have the Istio control plane and the data plane. In Istio uh, control plane, uh, you ha now have Pilot, Citadel, and, and Galley, uh, those three components. Once again, uh, those three now come together as a single, uh, single executable, that is the Istio D. So prior to 1.5, there were three different uh, components, uh, Pilot, Citadel, and uh, uh, Galley, uh, three different executables. At the same time, uh, there was another one called Mixer. So now the Mixer is optional. So basically what uh, Pilot does is it helps uh, Istio operators uh, define routing rules and uh, configurations which are required to uh, service service communications. Uh, for example, uh, if you have a service uh, called uh, order processing microservice, now when a request comes to that order processing microservice and if it wants to talk to uh, another upstream microservice, let's say inventory microservice, then uh, with pilot, you can define uh, a routing rule which says 80% uh, of traffic uh, will go to the version one of the inventory microservice and the rest 20% uh, uh, will go to the version two of the inventory microservice. So then uh, we have a Citadel. Uh, so Citadel, uh, it maintains an identity for each workload or uh, the microservice that runs under Istio and it also facilitates uh, the secure communications among a uh, workload. So Istio, uh, Citadel makes sure each workload in your Istio service mesh is provisioned with a key pair and also it makes sure those uh, keys, are up, uh, keys are rotated uh, frequently. Then we have the Galley component. So <clears throat> Galley sits between the pilot and the underneath platform. In this particular case, it's, it's Kubernetes. So Galley knows how to talk to uh, Kubernetes APIs and, and it keeps track of uh, the state of Kubernetes CRDs and it'll uh, push those information to pilot. So you can have pilot uh, written or run in a platform agnostic manner, like pilot doesn't need not to know how to uh, talk to the Kubernetes API server. Uh, uh, Galley will do that and feed that information to Pilot. Then uh, Mixer is, it, is not in this uh, uh, picture. So uh, Mixer is made optional uh, since 1.5.0. So it basically 
uh, takes care of uh, precondition checking, then quota management and uh, telemetry reporting. Uh, prior to 1.5, <coughs> the, the extensibility of the STO service mesh that revolved around uh, Mixer. So if you want to extend the STO functionality, then you could write uh, a, a, a Mixer plugin. It can be an authorization plugin, login plugin, or a monitoring plugin. So all the uh, uh, requests coming to the mesh will be intercepted by the proxy and then we'll uh, call a Mixer uh, to evaluate uh, policies. Then uh, that's the control plane. Now in data plane, you have uh, an ingress gateway and an egress gateway. So we can say all this north south traffic will go through uh, the ingress and egress. So all the traffic entering into your microservice deployment will first go through the ingress gateway. And then uh, all the traffic going out from your service mesh that will go through uh, the egress gateway. And uh, we have one more proxy running both in the ingress gateway and egress gateway. Then in addition to that, uh, uh, when you deploy a STO and you can, you can configure it so that uh, all your microservices which are running in a container in a pod will also be associated with a service proxy, which is once again on OI. So all the traffic coming to your pod will be intercepted by that particular on OI proxy. And all the traffic coming in and also going out will be intercepted by uh, the, the Envoy service proxy. So that's the, uh, the high level architecture. Uh, if you have any questions uh, with respect to that, please uh, put on chat or just uh, unmute yourself and ask. Okay, so here uh, in this session, uh, so more than slides, I'm going to take you through set of use cases, basically the code samples and show you uh, how things work. And any point, if you want to be in a discussion, uh, please feel to do that. So first, what I'm going to do is, I'm, uh, I'm going to deploy uh, <coughs> my inventory microservice, which is also an uh, gRPC service in Kubernetes, and then uh, with, with, within the, the Istio service mesh. And then uh, I will have a gRPC client, which is running outside the service mesh, outside the Kubernetes cluster, will talk to the uh, uh, talk to this uh, uh, gRPC service through the Istio Ingress Gateway. And here you can see this will be protected with MTLS, but here we'll start with no TLS, just plain gRPC traffic over HTTP2. Right? So uh, to do this, I'm sure a lot of you know about the, like how you, how the, the steps in doing that, but let me uh, uh, repeat it, like let me, uh, uh, go through it just to make sure we are all, we all are on the same page. So first we need to have uh, a container with our gRPC microservice. Then we need to create a pod, right? So, uh, so to create a pod, we create a Kubernetes deployment. Uh, let me go through that. Right. So this is the uh, this is the the corresponding YAML file. So uh, I need to have the container. Right, so this is the container. This is deployed uh, on uh, Docker Hub. So you can try this out too. And all the code samples are in that uh, uh, Git repository. And this is my gRPC uh, service, inventory microservice. Then I have a deployment. So deployment uh, internally will get a pod. Then after that, I need to create a Kubernetes service to expose this uh, to the other, other the components uh, in, in the Kubernetes deployment. You don't need to necessarily expose this is outside the, uh, the uh, Kubernetes deployment in this particular case. So, so there are multiple types of Kubernetes services. In this case, since we don't need to expose uh, this service outside the Kubernetes cluster, I'm going with the default type, which is the cluster IP. Then uh, one thing to notice here is, uh, I need to use uh, uh, for this service to work with Istio traffic control, you must use named ports. So that means, since uh, this service uh, ex expects a gRPC traffic, so this name should be gRPC, right? And the protocol is TCP, and then uh, the, the service port is this one, then target port is uh, 5051, uh, so that's the container port of my port, right? Which runs the uh, gRPC service. So this is common, right? This is what you do in a typical Kubernetes deployment. You have the deployment, then you have service. But when you want to expose this to the Istio Ingress Gateway, 
you also need to create a virtual service. Now, uh, it's easy to explain virtual service along with the gateway. So Istio introduced uh, two CRDs, uh, the virtual service and the, the gateway CRD. Right? So both the gateway CRD and the virtual service together help uh, uh, Istio Ingress Gateway, if you go to this diagram, this is the Istio Ingress Gateway here, right? Or if you go to the other slide, yeah, go to this slide. So this is the Ingress Gateway, right? So both the virtual service and the gateway resource together help Istio Ingress Gateway to find the way or how to route any request it gets to the corresponding service, right? Uh, so there's a reason. So this is if you are familiar with Kubernetes. So this is similar to Ingress resource. So one uh, one major change is uh, the you can you can decouple like concerns like uh, the gateway uh, basically takes care of uh, the uh, level four uh, related routing. So it will look at the host name, port name. Uh, so those configurations are um, are read from the gateway resource. Then how to how to route that traffic to a particular service, basically uh, uh, le le level uh, seven, L7 routing. So that's defined in the virtual service resource. So in a typical uh, uh, deep Kubernetes deployment, you can have one gateway, right? One gateway resource, and there can be multiple virtual services, right? So now, uh, before having a look at the virtual service, so let's have a look at our gateway resource. Right. So this is the uh, this is the gateway resource, right? Now you can see I'm running this gateway resource in the Istio system namespace, but you don't need to do that necessarily, right? So this is uh, this uh, in this particular I'm using just one. Uh, one uh, gateway that can route traffic to multiple hosts. Right? So here you can see this is uh, listening on or like uh, this instructs the uh, Istio Ingress gateway. If you if you uh, if you receive any traffic, gRPC traffic on port 80 for any host, right? So you can uh, put a wildcard here. You can also put specific host names if you want. Uh, traffic to any host then use this gateway resource to find the corresponding routing information. But for the Istio Ingress gateway, this information that you read from the gateway resource is not just enough to route the traffic to a particular workload, right? Then what it will do is, it will find out what are the virtual services associated with this particular uh, uh, gateway. Right. So now let's go to the virtual service definition. Now, if you look at this virtual service, the given virtual service is associated with one no more gateway. So now in this gateway can find out what are the virtual services associated with this particular gateway. Now it sees, it finds Ecom virtual service associated with that one. That's not enough. It will also find out whether even though this virtual service is associated with the, uh, that particular gateway, does it also share the same host, right? Or else the host defined here, does, does, it, does it match with the host definition in the gateway resource? In this case, yes, right? Because we had a, we, we have a wildcard in the gateway resource. So, that will, so this will match with that particular wildcard. Okay? So here also you can use a wildcard like asterisk.ecom.com. Then also it will match, but here you can have like, we cannot have like just asterisk, right? It has to come with some, uh, some domain. So then it will find this, uh, a virtual resource. Looking at this now, uh, Ingress Gateway would know uh, which service you need to route this traffic to the Kubernetes service. Here, the destination it points to the service name. So this is that service name, right? And also the service port. Now, looking at the service, then it's normal Kubernetes routing. You can find out where the port is, the workload, and then route the traffic. So that that is that is how uh, the the virtual service and Gateway works. So one another thing, if you go to the uh, gateway resource uh, resource again, here we define the gateway resource, and gateway resource <laughs> again has to be associated with this ingress gateway, right? So this is the ingress gateway. 
uh, this is the ingress gateway. So whatever the gateways we define, those need to be associated with this particular ingress gateway. That association is done by this selector. You say Istio ingress gateway. So if you look at the label of the uh, uh, Istio ingress gateway uh, deployment, which is running in um, in Istio system namespace, you will find this particular label. Right. So maybe we can check that. Uh, uh, let's say get uh, deployments. And should be Stio system. And name would be Stio ingress. And then you can uh, show label. So now if you look at the response, you will see this particular label here. Right, it's still in the state, it should be somewhere here. Right. App is there still. You can see this is a label, right? So then Kubernetes will find out, uh, uh, find out the corresponding in, uh, ingress gateway for this particular gateway, and with that, you can make the association. Uh, any any questions uh, up to now? Uh, okay, so now let's try to. Uh, we only discussed we didn't create anything, right? So first, let's try to create this. Uh, let's try to create the gateway resource. So I'm using this uh, shortcut to uh, do uh, cube uh, cube CTL apply minus F. So this is defined in gateway file, uh, gateway not ELS. Okay, so this created a gateway resource. Now we also need to create uh, the uh, uh, deployment, then virtual service for the uh, inventory microservice, which is the uh, uh, which is a gRPC service, right? So let's create that too. So now you can see uh, a virtual service got created, Kubernetes service got created, and a deployment got, got created. And if you do kubectl get pods, you will see this inventory deployment pod, right? So here you can see there are two containers. So one container is our uh, service container, uh, which is uh, which holds the uh, gRPC service, inventory mic service. The other one is the Istio or uh, the Envoy proxy, right? So in addition to that. Uh, you will also see another init container so that uh, uh, when you engage Istio uh, with uh, uh, in, with your uh, deployment, then the, the init container will make sure it will just update the uh, IP tables rules of your port uh, or the node. So all the traffic you are coming to your uh, co coming to your uh, port, uh, the service, it will be transparently go through the uh, Envoy proxy. Right? So it's, it's an init container. It'll it'll run. Uh, before uh, all the other containers start. Right? Okay, so now we have everything ready. Okay. Now we can also see uh, whether our uh, uh, gRPC service is running. Uh, we can uh, view the logs. Uh, let's do that too. Logs, uh, inventory. This is the container and then so now you can see this uh, gRPC service has been started and this is running on its own port. Now let's uh, invoke this to the gRPC client. So if you go back to the diagram, so we have all this setup now. So now we are invoking this service fully, uh, this client application. Uh, if you go to my GitHub repo, should be here. If you go to the GitHub repo, you can find the code. Uh, sample one. Uh, main. So this is the uh, interface uh, ideal of our gRPC service. Uh, then if you go here, you can find uh, the code for client and service. Book, right? Now I'll run the gRPC client. So this should be, uh, this should not be using TLS. So I'm using port 80 here. Okay. So now I should get a response. So now you can see I got a response. Right. So it 
the client could successfully communicate uh, with the grp service running in the community service now let's see how the actual communication happened for that i'll start this uh, kiali dashboard uh, so This URL. So this will show us how uh, the communication within uh, the Kubernetes environment happens. I'll pick uh, default namespace, is your namespace both, and then this basically. Right. It takes some time. So you can see this is gRPC. This is gRPC. And enable security. Okay, you can should be able to see in PLS here. Let me do again. Sometimes it takes some time to spread the traffic. Okay, so now you can see, right? Uh, so our client uh, talks to this uh, ingress gateway uh, from outside the uh, Kubernetes deployment. It comes here, but in that case, it's, 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 it doesn't come through the TLS, right? Just uh, uh, the plain, plain text. Then from here to the inventory service, it all protected with MTLS. We didn't do any configuration, but it still makes sure uh, out of the box, MTLS is enabled for all its services managed by Istio uh, service mesh, right? Uh, this is once again, uh, some tricky area. So even though uh, Istio enables uh, MTLS uh, for all its services, it doesn't necessarily strictly enforce MTLS for all the services. So what does that mean? So that means uh, even, even in this particular case, Istio in this gateway use MTLS to talk to our inventory microservice. If you have another service in, uh, in, 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 in this particular community namespace, it can talk to the inventory microservice without TLS, right? So that means inventory microservice doesn't necessarily enforce MTLS, right? So I'll, 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 I'll uh, show you that with an example later. Now let's see, let's try, let's try to uh, enforce uh, TLS or enable TLS at the ingress gateway here, right? So if you go to the slides, this is what we saw now, right? So everything is protected uh, with uh, MTLS. <laughs> now here, uh, we are going to protect this communication with TLS, right? To do that, we need to enable TLS at the Istio Ingress Gateway, and let's see how to do that. Uh, once again, uh, uh, if you have used Istio before uh, 1.5, so Istio, Istio introduced something called uh, SDS, uh, Secret Discovery Service, since Istio 1.1 uh, onwards, but it was not uh, supported out of the box. It was not in the default profile, right? So if you want to have SDS enabled, then uh, you need to uh, use SDS profile in, uh, in Istio. Uh, but in from 1.5 onwards, Istio 1.5 onwards, uh, the SDS is supported out of the box in the default profile. But it had one limitation. Even though SDS is enabled, it was only enabled for the service proxies. It was not enabled for the ingress gateway. But from 1.6 onwards, it's enabled for uh, ingress uh, gateway too. So SDS is enabled uh, for uh, ingress gateway. So the, the, the key discovery will happen through SDS, right? I think we discussed SDS in detail in our uh, uh, April session. Uh, so you can go through that video to find out more. Uh, in there, in that particular example, we use STO 1.5. So we had to uh, manually enable SDS for that ingress gateway. But since now I'm using STO 1.1.6.3, I don't need to do uh, that. So SDS is already enabled. Right? Uh, now to enable TLS to the 
to the ingress gateway, we need to have a public and private key pair, right? So let's try to create a public private key pair for our gateway. So here I'm using OpenSSL for that. And uh, uh, I have an OpenSSL uh, Docker container, so I don't need to uh, install anything. So this is the command to start uh, the OpenSSL uh, container. Okay. Got started. Now I need to create a secret, uh, or a key pair. Right? Okay, the secret key pair. Now if you go back to the local file system and if you go to uh, gateway keys directory you can find the keys that we just created now using these two keys we need to create a kubernetes secret of type tls right you can do it using this command okay. and we are creating this in uh, istio system because our istio ingress gateway is in istio system so secret is also uh, created in the istio system namespace Okay, so our secret got created. Now let's have a look at uh, the uh, uh, updated gateway definition, right? So we earlier we had a gateway which only supports uh, uh, gRPC or plain text. Now we'll see how to enforce TLS at the gateway level. So this is what we have now. This is what we deployed. Now we need to update the gateway definition to support TLS, right? So now it's using port 443 and we have enabled TLS. So mode we picked simple so simple means you will have a uh, one way tls communication between <laughs> the downstream client applications and we need certificates for that uh, to enable tls so those certificates are loaded from this ecom credential a secret that is what we just created right so now let's update the uh, gateway resource apply uh, Okay, so now uh, we are good. So we have the gateway enabled and we have the keys. Now we should be able to talk to this service to uh, TLS, right? So our gRPC client now will talk to this service over TLS. Uh, so if I just try the previous command, which talks to, uh, which, which talks to, the, uh, to port 80, it should fail now. Right, it's, it's failing now. Now let's try to invoke the same gRPC client with TLS. Okay. So here you can see, uh, I have specified port name as 443 and also I need to specify my certificate. So if you look at the client code, you can find out how I am using these, uh, uh, the parameters I'm passing to this client. Uh, so this key is basically uh, the, the CA uh, CA of the certificate associated with the uh, associate with the uh, ingress gateway because we, in a TLS handshake the client has to trust the public certificate of the uh, public certificate of server right now let's run this okay so now you can see it successfully talks the service right. here if you look at the uh, uh, look at the Kali dashboard. You won't see any change because this doesn't show the communication with the client, right? So if we update this one, you will see still the MTLS being used over gRPC, right? So now let's go back to our previous discussion, right? So uh, I mentioned uh, Istio 1.5 with auto MTLS. <laughs> it enables MTLS by default for all the Istio workloads, right? At the same time, it that doesn't necessarily mean MTLS is enforced at each workload, right? So let's see how it works. So what one thing we can do is we can we can ask Istio Ingress Gateway to not use MTLS when it, when it communicates with the uh, Istio, uh, sorry, uh, with uh, the inventory uh, service, right? So this is how you do it. You can define a destination rule. 
so if you go here, disable MPLS. So this is a destination rule, right? So if you combine this with uh, gateway and, and the virtual service, so gateway and virtual service uh, helps you find where your workload is, right? So destination rules define how, how you can, oh, how do you communicate with the given destination or given workload, given specified workload, right? Work workload is found. So this is, if you, so this, this decision rule we deploy in Istio system, where you uh, already have the Istio ingress gateway is running. So now when Istio ingress gateway or anything uh, from the Istio, Istio system namespace, when they want to talk to the inventory service, right? It's in, in inventory service in the default namespace, then TLS is disabled, right? So let's see how this works. Okay, let's apply this policy. Uh, disable MPLS. Okay, done. All right. Now let's invoke the same service, same same request. Okay, it's successful. Now let's go back and see our graph. Now, if you refresh, you won't see MPLS here. Will take a bit of time to update. Let's put send some more requests. So now you can see this is gRPC, but there's no MTLS, right? So we have enabled security already, but there is no MTLS. So we disabled MTLS communication. That means we didn't do any change for the inventory service, right? So that means it accepts both MTLS traffic as well as uh, plain HTTP or plain gRPC traffic, right? So now if you want to strictly enforce MTLS for a given service, this is how you do that. You need to define a peer authentication policy, right? So once again, this peer authentication uh, CRD is a new uh, CRD still introduced since uh, 1.5. Uh, before that, you had to use a, a CRD called policy, right? So now this policy CRD got deprecated uh, since 1.5 and since 1.6, uh, it's been removed. Now let's see, let's look at that policy. Uh, strict MTLS. So here we define uh, a peer authentication resource. It says you can like, you can completely ignore the selector. So if you remove this one, that means uh, MTLS is strict for all the services running in default namespace, right? But if you want to filter out or specify the strict uh, uh, MTLS policy for a given service, then you can put a uh, mesh label here. So here I'm only enforcing uh, MTLS for the inventory microservice. So let's try to uh, run this one. Uh, strict MTLS. Okay. So now our gate, we have asked our ingress gateway not to talk to not to talk not to talk MTLS when it talks to the uh, inventory microservice. At the same time, at the ingress, uh, still, sorry, inventory gRPC service side, we have asked, you must expect MTLS traffic. So that means our request should fail. Okay. So let's run the same thing. So this should fail. Yeah, so now it fails. Okay. So that is how you strictly enforce MTLS in, for a Istio a specific service or for a namespace, for, a, for a, a, all the services running in a given namespace. I think that's a question. Let me put that. Uh, this this Istio uh, has the option of accepting type of secret because otherwise you have to volume mount the created secret in. Okay, yes. So that is sorry. Let me repeat the question. Uh, uh, this Istio has an option of accepting type of secret because otherwise you have to volume mount the created secret into the container in normal case. So that is how Istio worked. Uh, before 1.1, uh, 1 .1, uh, even after that, it was the default option. Uh, 
uh, but now to fix that problem this sds was in, introduced uh, the the secret discovery service so with secret discovery service you don't need to mount any uh, any 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 uh, secrets uh, to a given volume right so it will uh, all it, it, it the those secrets will never be read by the file system they are only kept in memory and also with uh, before before sds whenever you rotate the secrets or no it has to restart itself right but now with sds you don't need to uh, you don't need to see, uh, restart uh, the envoy you can simply refresh the memory so no more uh, no more uh, secret amounts required okay so hope uh, i answered your question okay so now uh, so let's uh, remove these uh, two policies i created uh, Yeah, authentication. Delete that one. And also, I delete the uh, other one. Uh, okay. Now this plan should start. Working in the normal way, so it works. And if you go back, you should see <coughs> all traffic MPLS. This has to be MPLS. Yeah. So MPLS. So we are back to uh, where we were before. Now, so this we completed. Let's come here. So in the in the example so far, our gRPC client was running outside the Kubernetes cluster. Now let's try to bring it to the Kubernetes cluster itself. So here we are using another microservice call, order processing microservice as the gRPC client, right? So basically what happens is the client application running outside the Kubernetes cluster, it will send a request over HTTP, JSON HTTP message to the order processing microservice uh, basically, you post an order, then the order processing microservice will talk to the uh, gRPC service to update the event. Right, so that's the use case. And uh, all these communications, uh, as we discussed before, they are protected with MPLS, and this one is also now protected with uh, TLS. Right, basically HTTPS here. Now, what we'll do here is we need to deploy the order processing microservice. Uh, the definition of the order processing microservice is just like the inventory microservice, you need to have a deployment service, virtual service, and that virtual service is attached to the uh, attached to the uh, the gateway resource that we created. Right. So if you look at this one, uh, orders definition. Right. So this is the uh, this is order process microservice. So this is the image name that you that we pull from the Docker Hub. And this is the Kubernetes service. Here you can see we need to use name ports. It's HTTP now. And this is the virtual service. It is attached to the ecom gateway that we created. And it is it is uh, uh, accepting traffic coming to this particular host name, right? Then the gateway resource, the Istio ingress gateway uh, knows uh, looking at the gateway and the virtual service, how to forward the traffic to uh, this order processing microservice. Okay, so let me create uh, the orders deployment. Okay, done. Now let's do a curl, right? So from uh, from this client, right? So this this is a curl client. If you go to the command here. You can see the curl message. Okay. So this is the curl request, right? So I'm using uh, two placeholders here, ingress HTTPS port and uh, ingress host, right? So I'm running uh, Docker for the de desktop. So here ingress uh, HTTPS port is uh, uh, 443 and this is uh, uh, my local host. Let me go this and see whether we have it. And ingress host. Right, so now uh, we are ready to run this curl command. Okay. 
okay so it successfully took order 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 process in microservice right it successfully took the order process in microservice and then uh, got a uh, http uh, 201 so the resource been created now if you go to the kiali console we can uh, see how uh, the traffic goes now if you refresh this one right so here you can see uh, in the ingress gateway here order service is here the request comes to order service then order service talks to the inventory service so let's refresh this we also have another request yeah still rendering so this is grpc this is grpc this is grpc and this is http right all protected with mtls so we didn't do anything because uh still uh, uh by default enable enables mtls so all the communications now protected with mtls and if you want to see uh the the message printed on the order process in microservice. Let's look at its logs. Yeah. Now you can see, you see the logs updated inventory one. Uh, so this I'll explain later here from at the order process in microservice itself. I, I print all the headers it gets from the on my proxy. Okay. So now uh, go to slides. So we have done this, right? So now, uh, so we have the entire thing working, uh, all protected with MPLS. Okay. This is what we saw. Now let's see how we can do uh, 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 authentication with uh, JWT and then again enforce authorization based on uh, the attributes uh, that come with the JWT right so now to get a JWT we need to have a, a secret token service so I'm going to deploy uh, STS in the Kubernetes environment itself first then after that our client application curl it will authenticate the MTLS using OO2O and uh, Authenticate the STS using O2 and we'll get a secret token, secret token, which is JWT. And then we'll pass that JWT to this particular uh, microservice. Then this microservice can enforce certain access control policies. Then after that, when it talks to the inventory microservice or gRPC, it will also pass the JWT. Right? So now with HTTP2, uh, there's no conceptual header. So you need to pass this JWT as a metadata. So that will be done here. So one limitation in Istio so far is when you get a JWT here, right? We cannot ask uh, uh, Onvo your Istio to send the same JWT when this microservice talks to and downstream uh, and upstream microservice, right? Inventory microservice. Since that limitation is there, what I did was so I uh, got the JWT coming from uh, the client app to the order processing microservice itself from my application code itself. I extracted the JWT from the headers I get from uh, the Envoy proxy and added that header uh, to the uh, gRPC metadata in my outbound request to the uh, inventory microservice, right? So that I did from code. So let's see how this works. Uh, first, let me deploy uh, the Istio, uh, sorry, the, the STS service. I think that's a question. Uh, uh, for somebody uh, starting new on Istio, it would be helpful if there is a workflow, for example, first we are one creating a gateway with gateway ML and then creating ingress. Uh, okay, yeah, yes. So I think I briefly explained that. Uh, so the workflow would be first you create uh, the pod using the deployment then a Kubernetes service on top of that virtual service, then you have the gateway, right? So you don't need to have a, a ingress resource created here. Uh, basically, uh, in Istio, both the uh, virtual service with gateway will play a similar role uh, as you see in, in Kubernetes deployment with ingress, right? With ingress resource. 
Okay, so now I need to deploy STS uh, service now because I need to get a JWT. Uh, so deployment is same. You can find the uh, STS uh, YAML file. So STS got created. Now I can get a token from the STS using a curl command. You go to commands here. So here I can get a token using this one. So here you can see I'm using OAuth password gram type, but you should not be using that. I, I use it here just uh, uh, for the convenience. In, in practice, uh, a particular user may log into web app uh, using uh, authorization uh, code grant type, then uh, you get the access token either as the open ID connect token or the access token itself can be a self-contained JWT. Right? So let me copy this one. So this is HTTP, I need to use this one. Yeah, so now this return a JWT. So if you copy this one. And if you go to JWT.io and you can decode this and see, this is base 64 you are encoded. Here you can see the JWT. It has a subject and it has an audience and the scope and the other parameters. Actually, the very first meetup we did uh, under this IAM4 developer meetup series, it's on JWT. Uh, you can uh, find that recording in, in our uh, YouTube channel. So if you go, if you want to go into the details, right? So now we have JWT. Now we need to uh, we need to enforce access control policies, right? So first, let's see how to enforce an access control policy for the uh, inventory microservice here. Here we would say, if you want to access this microservice, you must bring a JWT, right? So this is how you say it. Here, right? So once again, right? So it's still uh, 1.4 had this authorization policy concept, right? Uh, so it's here and uh, uh, it had in fact the, the policy concept, right? So with the policy concept, you you need to define both uh, MTLS authentication and JWT authentication both in the same policy. Right? From Istio 1.5 onwards, it, it introduces request authentication and PA authentication. So we already had the example on PA authentication. So PA authentication deals with MTLS communication and request authentication deals with JWT communication, right? So it basically decouple to those two concerns, two, two different policies. And in fact, the policy resource is no more valid in uh, Istio 1.6. It was duplicated in uh, 1.5 and it's no more there in 1.6. Now here this says, uh, this policy is applicable to the inventory microservice. It says you need to bring a JWT with this particular issuer and audience should be this, right? And then to validate the JWT, which is signed, right? From the private key of the corresponding STS, you need to fetch the corresponding public key from this location, then on my proxy will validate the signature, right? One thing, one important thing to notice with this request authentication policy is, if the request comes with the JWT, this will work as expected. Like if it, if the JWT has a different issuer, on my proxy won't let that request forward to the uh, our workload. But if there's no JWT in the request, this will fail. This, this will pass, right? So this will simply let you void. So because of that, with request authentication, you also need to define an authorization policy, right? So we have defined authorization policy. It says this is applicable to inventory microservice and you are allowed only if you have a request principle. So that means the request principle can be anyone, right? We don't worry about a request principle. Like to have a request principle, then you need to authenticate the user first, right? So this is what this does. Now let's try to apply this policy. Apply. Okay. Now let's try to invoke uh, our gRPC client first and see whether it works. This should fail now, right? Because now we are trying to invoke the inventory service uh, without a JWT. Inventory service expects a JWT, but we are not sending a JWT, so this should fail. Yeah, so you can see it fails unauthenticated. Now we can send the JWT, right? In the request itself, I think I already copied it. 
So let me export this to this environment variable called token. Okay. Now, if you look at the client code of the gRPC client, it, if this token environment variable will, is there, it will pick it from there and it will add that JWT to the gRPC metadata uh, in the request to the inventory microservice, right? So now if I try to invoke the same service here, same, same, same client, this should pass now because it carries a JWT. Yeah. You can see it carries a JWT. Right. Next, we'll see how to do the same thing through the order processing microservice. So let's run the same uh, curl command we ran before. Right. Now this will fail because this doesn't carry the uh, the JWT, right? So the JWT should go in the authorization HTTP header. Uh, header as a BR header, right? Authorization BR then the JWT. So this should ideal fail, right? So this fails. And if you look at these headers, you can see this fails because it goes to request goes to the uh, order process microservice. There's no authorization policy there, but it fails at the time authorization policy trying to talk to the inventory service. So if you go here, you will see it fails. Yeah, it's unauthenticated. This is because this talks to the inventory microservice and it fails there because there's no JWT here, right? So now to carry the JWT, I need to use that uh, environment variable in my HTTP request. So here, if you look at this request, here you can see I have an authorization header, bearer, then I get the token. So this should pass. Okay, now you can see the request works fine. And here in the order processing microservice side, I also print the JWT, right? Ideally you should not print, just to show you how it works. I'm printing that JWT. And, and uh, there's another tricky thing, right? So here, um, uh, is the envoy will pass through the JWT header to the uh, workload if there's no JWT policies defined, right? So in this case, there's no JWT policies defined for the, uh, for the order processing microservice. That's why I get JWT here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to define an authorization policy to the order processing microservice. Right? So this is that uh, policy, right? This is that policy, right? So then you can't just access the order processing microservice without a uh, JWT, right? So here, in that case, if we if there's a order, JWT policy defined or the uh, request authentication policy defined for a given service, if you don't specify this parameter, forward original token set to true, then this envoy proxy won't send the original JWT to the microservice. So then we cannot talk to the inventory microservice. Right? So that's why I said this to true. Now let's see how this works. Yeah, I'll apply the authorization policy for the order service. So now let's try to invoke this. It carries a token, right? Okay, now it, 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 it the communication happens successfully. It goes to the order processing microservice and order processing microservice talks to the inventory microservice. Now if I try to invoke this without the token, let's see what happens. Earlier, when I tried to invoke this without the token, it went to the uh, it went to the uh, uh, order process microservice and it fails at the order process microservice, right? But now, if I try to invoke the same request without the JWT, then the request will be blocked at the order process microservice itself. It won't even execute anything on the order process microservice because we have now defined authorization policy at the order process microservice end. Okay, now you can see you don't see anything here. It doesn't reach the automation microservice, but you get an RBAC access denied uh, response from the Envoy because now we have enabled JWT authorization at the order system microservice as well. Okay, uh, since we have, I mean, uh, closer to our closing time. Uh, so there's another policy. Uh, I will skip doing that, but you can try it out too. Here you can do more uh, 
fine grained control, right? Uh, you can see you will only allow the request if the 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 HTTP or the method that you are using against that service, even for gRPC, is post, right? And then the username in the claim is Peter. Then the scope is foo and use has this particular role. Then only the authorization will pass, right? So here you can uh, use allow, deny both. Yeah, the, the authorization policy uh, CRD was introduced in 1.4. At that point, it only had allow action, but since 1.5, uh, it still also introduced deny. So you can also specify deny here. So maybe we can try this too, right? So let me apply this policy. Session inventory two. So now we have two policies, right? So two, there are two policies uh, applied against the inventory microservice. Then uh, if there's one deny policy, so that, that decision will proceed against all the others. Now, if I try to invoke this with the JWP, right? It should pass because it meets our criteria. Now, let's say I'll put this as a deny. Now it should fail because all these claims, they match our request, then you deny the request. Let me update this. Okay. So that should be denied, not at the order versus microservice side, but at the inventory uh, GRPC service side. Okay. Yeah, you can you get the access to that request. So you see an error in the uh, order versus microservice because it talks to the inventory microservice and there it got rejected and we get the response saying access denied because uh, because we have policy to deny uh, deny the request if it matches this particular criteria. Yes, so I think that's what I uh, wanted to cover in this session. Uh, any questions? Uh, And we'll be posting this to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, so if you can go here, you can find uh, the link to the YouTube channel. Uh, yes, so uh, the question is, are you going to share the slides? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, share the slides as well. Yeah. We'll, we'll send a message to the uh, meetup group uh, with the link to the slides. Yeah, so if you don't have any questions, uh, probably we can wind up. And then again, thank you very much for uh, joining in. And uh, in two weeks time, probably we'll have the next one. Uh, so there we are going to talk about uh, FIDO2. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining. Okay, so there's a one question. Uh, let me take that too. Uh, does it still have the option of accepting type of secrets? Because otherwise you have to, I think that I answered already, right? Yeah, I answered that question already. Okay, uh, thank you very much and uh, looking forward to see you again in our next meetup.